Hello networkers and welcome back to another Ask the Network Engineer series and in this episode I'm going to answer one of your questions. And this question comes from Douglas Carrington and he asks, how did you get experience with Nexus equipment? Very good question. And what Douglas is talking about is there is a series of data center switches that Cisco has released for many, many years, by the way. And these are the Cisco Nexus 7000 series, the 5000 and the 2000 series. Now these switches are really aimed for medium and large size data center networks. I have never seen any SMB or small size network utilize this type of equipment, even some medium size networks. This is really for medium size networks on the high end to large size um, switches. But besides the Nexus, and I'll answer the question, Douglas, of how I got that particular experience. It wasn't fun, but I'll tell you how I got that experience. But also more importantly, I will explain in this episode how I typically learn about new technologies and new products. I'm going to give you my bullet points of basically how I learn new technologies and what you can use as well. The very first thing that I always do when I'm learning about any new networking technology is what is the new hardware that is released by various networking vendors like Cisco and Fortinet and Apollo Networks. But I typically look at Fortinet and Cisco heavily and what is new. And for that, I go to their website and I look for the data sheets and say, oh, this is the new firewall. This is a new switch that Cisco is releasing or Fortinet is releasing. I mean, this year alone, Fortinet uh, announced their one terabit firewall. Awesome. So I got to learn about that, including this is probably the beginning of this year or late last year. I'm not sure when that happened, but there was the Cisco Nexus 9000 series. And I get to learn about the new features and other capabilities supported. So that's really the best, uh, that is where you should start. What is the new hardware that is released by a particular vendor? So I look at the data sheets. I look at the performance of that particular product. I look at the switch capacity, the throughput, the port capacity and what type of ports are supported, 10 gig, 40 gig, whatever. And I like to learn about what are the new features that are in this particular product that I can't deploy on other type of routers or switches or anything like that. So those are things that I quickly determine from the data sheets. What are the new features in a new product and its performance? Okay, number two, once I've learned about what is the new hardware that is out there and what new features it introduced, then I like to learn more about those new features. So I go to those data sheets and that allows me to learn more about how it works, what, you know, and what it does, some of the caveats, the best practices, how it is encapsulated and how it's used across a network for better understanding of what it does so I can know when it can be used for particular networking environments. And that's what I did when I learned about the Nexus 7000 series. It introduced new features like OTV and VPC. And those are new features that are very unique to that particular product line. And because of that, I went to those data sheets and I learned everything uh, I could about those technologies that could help me to understand when it could be used and when not to be used and other caveats along the way. So all of that is basically in the data sheets. As I said, technology always changes. If you're in this field, you understand that networking technology is an ongoing learning experience. So that's why every quarter I learn about the new hardware and then I get to learn about the new features in terms of what it does and how it works. Okay, so once I've learned about the concepts about a particular new hardware and the new features, my next step is learning how to configure that product and those new features. And the best place to go for that is the provided configuration guides that is offered on these vendor websites. And they're great. They will provide you syntax of how to configure a wide variety of things on that product or for a particular feature. They will provide some helpful um, configuration examples. 
You get to see some of the default timers, which are important to understand that for reference. And of course, looking at or configuring particular settings on the particular device. And of course, you can also learn about other concepts that may have not been very clear in the data sheets and other caveats. So that is definitely the best place to go of learning how to configure that product and those new features. The next thing that I do is getting hands-on experience with that product or the operating system and learning about how to configure some of these new features and other features as well that is supported on that new platform. So getting that experience, it is a little tough for the Nexus side because that runs a different operating system. It runs the NX OS or the Nexus operating system. So you can't use other particular tools to build your lab to learn about that product. It's not there yet. But this is what you can do, and this is actually what I did. So when you're first starting out of learning about the Nexus products, and this is something that a lot of people um, don't seem to understand. A lot of people think that they need direct access to that type of switch. Like they need access to a 7000 or a 5000 series switch. You do, though, but just for a little bit. You don't need it for majority of your learning um, experience. It's not really needed for that. So what you do is you just need to learn about the NX operating system. That's what really, really matters of understanding that operating system and how to configure many of the features that you've learned about from the configuration guides. So when you're starting out of learning and getting hands-on experience, I always tell people, get experience with the Nexus 1000V. It is a virtual machine that you can install on the ESXi, VMware ESXi server, and it's like a full-blown Cisco switch. And basically your virtual machines would connect to that virtual switch, well, virtually. And that's fantastic. That allows you to do a lot of great command sets and learn about the Nexus operating system. So that's what I did first, and that's what you should do as well of understanding that. Look at the configuration guides for the 1000V. Yes, there'll be some stuff that is different for that, but you're looking at how to configure some of these other type of protocols like routing and switching. Focus on that and that particular syntax. You need to be comfortable and familiar with that operating system. Another thing that I use when I got hands-on experience with the Nexus operating system is there is another type of virtual machine that runs the Nexus 7000. It's called Titanium. And do your Google searches and you will see that it's been out there for some time. A lot of people are using this or attempting to use it to learn about the Nexus operating system. And really what it is, is a virtual machine that you can install on your VMware workstation or your ESXi server. And there it is, you get to learn about the Nexus operating system. So I got my particular copy of Titanium from a Cisco sales engineer, a Cisco SC. I got a lot of uh, friends at Cisco. And here's my main complaint about Titanium. It's not very reliable. It doesn't work half the time. There's a lot of issues that can come up. So it's not something that's very solid that it works. <clears throat> but there is articles out there that can give you exposure of how you can set that up. And getting some exposure to that is better than nothing for learning about the Nexus operating system. There's also the Cisco Development Network where you can get a lot of other type of virtual machines or emulators like the Cisco UCS and learning about that product. So you can check that out and that can also be a further assistance for getting more hands-on experience to services that you may not typically have in other cases. You can get other hands-on experience with using a very popular tool called GNS3.net. This is one of the most widely popular products that is used for learning among network engineers. If you have never heard of GNS3.net, you need to check that out and invest the time because that will definitely increase your learning experience. You get to build topologies and kind of access, you know, virtual routers, so to speak. But you must provide the Cisco IOS images 
for these particular routers in these topologies. But it allows you to configure a lot of things with routing and switching and security and translations. So many fantastic things. There's also the Cisco CSR1000V, which is a virtual machine, a virtual router that runs the Cisco IOS XE. The same operating system that runs on the Cisco ASR model. And that is a fantastic virtual machine. It's very, very stable. It comes with a 60 or 90 day trial version, but you can configure a lot of enterprise features like OTV and Lisp and even NAT64 or BGP. You can do a lot of fantastic stuff on the CSR1000B. And that's what I use for all of my learning experience for new protocols and features. Another thing that you can consider is signing up for a bootcamp class. There are a lot of dedicated three day or five day classes that will teach you about the concepts, the best practices, the caveats about the Nexus 7000 series switches, the 5000 or the 2000 series switches, depending on what class you signed up for. And they will give you access, lab access to those equipment to do type of lab assignments that is provided to you. Now it's a little pricey, so I typically don't do those kind of classes because it's very expensive. But if you have the budget for that, that is probably your best option for getting true hands-on experience with those type of enterprise data center products. So that is it. That's how I learned about new technologies, new protocols for the past 15 years. That every quarter of every year, so four times every year, I research and read what is the new products that are out there, how they work, how they perform, what new features they introduce. Then I read the data sheets about those new features and how they operate and do's and don'ts and caveats, best practices, all that fun stuff. Then I read all the configuration guides on how to configure that new product or that new feature or that new operating system that could be introduced. And then from there, I get my hands-on experience. So there's two different tracks for that. There's the Nexus kind of hands-on learning and there's the Cisco IOS learning. For the Nexus, you are very limited. You have, again, the Cisco Nexus 1000V. That can, that, that's a good starter. And if you have access to Cisco, to a Cisco sales engineer, that works with the um, data center um, divisions, then you could probably get access to the virtual machine titanium where those can provide some more assistance of getting access and experience with the Nexus operating system. That's what's very important. And of course, if you have the budget, you can consider um, bootcamp classes that will provide labs for learning about the different products and the other concepts. So once again, if you have the budget for that, you can look into some of those type of programs. But if you're learning about something that is iOS, then there are a lot of great options. You got GNS3, and of course, my favorite, you have the Cisco CSR1000V. Now, another thing that I do is this. From all the learning that I do for the concepts and the configuration or best practices design, I put all of them within my notes. So I put all of my learning notes into a single document that I call the engineer notes that has concept related information. Anything that is design related for my reading goes into the network design cookbook that I constantly update on our website, routehub.net. I constantly update that. That's very, very important to me is the network design cookbook. Or if I'm reading something that is configuration related, then I place that into our Cisco configuration reference guide that we also offer on our website. So that's what I do. If it's concepts, if it's configuration, if it's design, I put all of that into our training program that you guys can utilize. Now, my engineering notes is not yet available because I have to proofread that. I just kind of just, it's like very quick notes for me. So I have to make it more readable. So hopefully in time, I will make my engineering notes available for you guys 
um, to access or to be available through our training program. And we are finished. So Douglas, thank you very much for the great question that was asked. Just follow those particular um, points that I mentioned for learning about new technologies. Remember, networking technologies are constantly growing. You got to keep up with it and learn it. If not, you'd be far behind and it'd be hard to catch up. Just keep that in mind. But I want to hear from you guys. So please post your questions below here on our page, on our channel, about anything in the networking field or being a network engineer. Ask your questions below and your question will come up in a future video. So please subscribe to our channel. That means a lot. And we will see you guys next time.